Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Abelisaurids were a group of medium to large sized theropods that dwelt across the former regions of Gondwana. Originating in the Middle Jurassic period, fossil finds have been recovered from South America, Africa, Madagascar, India, and, more surprisingly, Europe. Abelisaurs were a highly distinct lineage from the Silurosaurian dominated theropod faunas of the Northern Hemisphere, being instead members of Ceratosauria. They are defined by a number of anatomical features, such as the possession of relatively short, deep skulls, tiny, almost vestigial forelimbs, stocky hindlimbs, and small serrated teeth. All known members of Abelisauridae were hypercarnivores, in some cases being dominant predators in their environments, although in Africa and South America they played second fiddle to the massive carcharodontosaurs. In terms of size, these animals ranged between 2 and 9 metres long, roughly 6.5 feet to 30 feet, with an undescribed Kenyan specimen allegedly reaching Tyrannosaurus-like dimensions. Abelisaurids were first described on the basis of remains recovered from South America in the 1980s, and were assumed to have been endemic to that continent during the Cretaceous. The often scrappy nature of the fossil material led to an identification as a unique Gondwanan lineage of tyrannosaurs, although the discovery of the genus Carnotaurus demonstrated that these animals were a derived lineage of ceratosaurs instead. Later finds additionally expanded the known range of abelisaurs, both geographically and temporally. The oldest known member of Abelisauridae was the genus Eoabelisaurus, native to the Middle Jurassic of Argentina roughly 163 million years ago. This was a 6 metre, 19 feet long carnivore, with the holotype possessing many distinctive traits of the family, including a thickened skull roof and highly reduced forelimbs. The discovery of Eoabelisaurus pushed back the temporal range of the family by more than 40 million years, as previous studies had concluded that these were a primarily Cretaceous group of theropods. Additional abelisaurid material has also been recovered from the late Jurassic of Portugal and the Tendaguru beds of Tanzania, although these have proved too scrappy to provide allocation to any particular genus. Eoabelisaurus was the most basal member of the family, in addition to being by far the most ancient, with the next most basal genus only having been described in 2020. This was Spectrovenator, an unusually small abelisaurid measuring just 2.2 metres in length and recovered from a single well-preserved specimen located in northern Minas Gerais, Brazil. Dating to the early Cretaceous period, roughly 125 million years ago, Spectrovenator helped to fill in a notable gap in the fossil history of abelisaurs, bridging the gap between the Jurassic Eoabelisaurus and the later Cretaceous forms such as Rugops. In addition to its anatomy, this genus was also rather transitional, possessing a skull that was longer and narrower than later abelisaurs, suggesting that Spectrovenator had a weaker bite force than its more derived relatives. In the paper describing the genus, Zaher et al. noted that abelisaurs appear to have increased in size as the Cretaceous went on, and only developed their distinctive blunt and robust skulls in the second half of the period. The skull of Spectrovenator showed a number of similarities to that of the similarly basal African genus Rugops, demonstrating that these genera occupied a similar place in abelisaurid phylogeny. Known from a single well-preserved skull discovered in Niger in the year 2000, and scrappier remains recovered from the Senamanian-aged Kemkem beds of Morocco, Rugops was a modestly sized abelisaur, measuring about 4.5 metres, that is 14 feet long, and weighing roughly 800 pounds. It inhabited an ecosystem dominated by far larger theropods, including Spinosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus, and would have likely scavenged from kills vacated by the latter. Another abelisaurid genus, Cryptops, was native to Niger, although originating from slightly older rocks dated to 110 million years ago. This was an animal larger than Rugops, at an estimated 6 to 7 meters. 19 to 23 feet, and would have therefore targeted larger prey, including modestly sized titanosaurs and iguanodontians. Beyond Rugops, there exists a possible clade of more derived abelisaurs known as the Majungasaurines. Potential members of this subfamily were native to Africa, Madagascar, India, and Europe, suggesting the interconnectedness of these regions during the Cretaceous. The type genus, Majungasaurus, is the best known of these 
recovered from latest Cretaceous Maastrichtian deposits of Madagascar, Majungasaurus was a 6-7 metre carnivore and was likely the apex predator in its environment, with fragmentary material suggesting that the animal could reach lengths of 8 metres in certain cases. The skull of Majungasaurus is exceptionally well known compared to most theropods and generally similar to that of other abelisaurids. Like other abelisaurid skulls, its length was proportionally short for its height, although not as short as in Carnotaurus. The skulls of large individuals measured 60 to 70 centimetres, 24 to 28 inches long. The premaxilla was tall, which made the tip of the snout very blunt. However, the skull of Majungasaurus was markedly wider than in other abelisaurs. All abelisaurids had a rough, sculptured texture on the outside faces of the skull bones, and Majungasaurus was no exception. The postcranial skeleton was robust, with the neck bones being thick and likely very strong, meaning that the animal utilised this feature in order to rip chunks of flesh from its prey by shaking and retracting its head. The hind limbs were stocky and short compared to the overall body length, suggesting that Majungasaurus were not fast runners, instead relying on short bursts of speed launched from ambush. It dwelt alongside the modestly sized Titanosaur Rapetosaurus, with tooth marks found on the leg bones of this sauropod, proving that Majungasaurus at least fed on this animal. In addition, this abelosaur is known to have possessed cannibalistic tendencies, being one of the only theropod dinosaurs for which direct evidence of this behaviour has been described. Majungasaurus was closely related to three genera of Indian abelosaurs recovered from late Cretaceous rocks, although all of these are known from significantly poorer remains. These included Rahiliosaurus, a 6 metre animal that dwelt in the Maastrichtian stage of what is now Gujarat. Remains of at least seven individuals have been described, but are represented by a jumbled array of postcranial elements. Rahiolisaurus appears to have been a fairly gracile animal, certainly compared to the related genus Rajasaurus, which was roughly the same size as the former, but was significantly more robust than heavily built. In fact, Rajasaurus closely resembled Majungasaurus in terms of overall size and ecological niche, being a specialised titanosaur hunting ambush predator. The animal is known from decent remains, including the maxillae, premaxillae, brain case and quadrate bone on the skull, and spine, hip bones, legs and tail in postcranial elements. Rajasaurus possessed a single horn at the rear of the skull, possibly used in mating displays or in territorial confrontations in which individuals would have engaged in headbutting behaviour. The large size and relative completeness of this genus have made it among the most famous of India's dinosaurs, becoming a tourist draw for its native state of Gujarat. This cannot be said for a third Indian abelisaur, Indosaurus, the only evidence of which has currently been lost. Interestingly, Recent finds uncovered in the 2010s have revealed the presence of Majungasaurine abelisaurs in Europe. Although today Europe is resolutely a part of the Northern Hemisphere and shares broadly similar fauna with Asia, during the Cretaceous this region was an archipelago of subtropical islands not dissimilar from the Caribbean today. As such, Europe possessed its own unique faunal communities, with animals of both Asian and African origins inhabiting the archipelago. Abelisaurs must have entered Europe by travelling across intermittent land bridges connected to North Africa, although when this may have occurred is unknown at present. Europe's oldest definitive Majungasaurines date from the late Cretaceous circa 75 million years ago, in particular the genus Archovenator. This was a large animal, native to southern France and measuring up to 7 metres long, with a holotype consisting of a brain case, caudal vertebrae, teeth, a right fibula and tibia. Archovenator was the apex predator in its environment, preying on contemporary titanosaurs and rhabdodontids. Another French Majungasaurine has been identified, but this has not yet been officially named and is simply known as the Porcio abelisaurid. The small genus Genusaurus is also sometimes listed here as well. As late Cretaceous Europe lacked the large tyrannosaurs present in Asia and North America at the time, Abelisaurs appear to have occupied a similar niche there, being short-armed ambush hunters. Across the Tethys Sea in North Africa, Abelisaurids are rare given the paucity of late Cretaceous African fossil-bearing deposits, although the Maastrichtian genus Chenanisaurus has been named on the basis of a partial lower jaw and associated teeth. 
This was one of the largest known abelosaurs at up to 8 metres, 26 feet long, possessing an incredibly blunt and short-snouted skull. The lower mandible was very tall given its length, giving the animal a powerful bite and an almost bulldog-like ability to grab hold of prey without letting go. This would have been an ideal hunting strategy for preying on titanosaurs, as the more the prey item struggled, the deeper the predator's teeth would soar into its flesh. The phylogenetic position of Chinanisaurus is not certain, but it appears to have been a basal abelosaurid, perhaps among the most basal, although further postcranial remains would need to be found in order to solidify this position. In South America, an entirely different endemic lineage of abelosaurs held the fort, the Brachyrostrans. These were the sister lineage of the Majungasaurians, and, as their name suggests, possessed skulls that were short and deep. All uncontroversial Brachyrostrans were native to South America, likely developing there in isolation after the continent split from Africa during the early Cretaceous. The most basal member of this clade was the Argentinian genus Ilocalesia from the Xenomania 95 million years ago. It is known from very fragmentary remains, but recent studies have estimated a length of over 5 metres, or 17 feet, for the animal. It was a close relative of two other Xenomanian abelosaurs from the region, Scorpio venator and Ercrixinatosaurus. All of these genera were fairly similar in appearance, being boxy skulled animals with keratinized faces. They were modestly sized when compared to the enormous carcharodontosaurs with which they shared their environment, such as Mapusaurus. In 2020, a new genus was placed in a phylogenetic position among these taxa, the 6.5 meter Thanos, recovered from Santonian age deposits in Brazil, and named after the purple titan from the Marvel franchise. The most derived Brachyrostrans were members of the clade Carnotaurini, these included the famous genus Carnotaurus, along with a number of more poorly known relatives. The largest abelosaur currently known from decent material, the Maastrichtian age Pycnomenosaurus, was part of Carnotaurini. This formidable predator is known from a single specimen consisting of teeth, parts of the pelvic girdle, cervical vertebrae, and a right tibia and fibula, with recent estimates placing this genus at up to 9 metres, or 30 feet long, and weighing several tonnes. It was closely related to the similar Orcosaurus, Abelisaurus, and Chilmesaurus, all of which were native to Patagonia during the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous. One of the first abelosaurs to have been scientifically described, with the holotype unearthed in 1984, was Carnotaurus. Found in the Chubut province of Argentina, this was a large yet lightly built predator. The holotype specimen was almost two-thirds complete, missing only the lower hind limbs and most of the tail. Overall, the genus measured up to 7.8 metres, that is 25 feet long, and stood roughly 10 feet tall. The skull was short and blunt, with two sharp horns projecting from above the eyes. The hind limbs were long and slender, suggesting an animal built for speed, capable of running at up to 35 to 40 miles an hour. Exactly why Carnotaurus would have needed such adaptations is still debated, as its proposed titanosaurian prey would have been very slow-moving animals in comparison. The lower jaw possessed a great deal of flexibility, allowing large chunks of meat to have been swallowed quickly. As in all abelosaurs, the forelimbs were tiny and vestigial, similar to those of modern emus and kiwis, while the exquisite preservation of the holotype made Carnotaurus among the first non-avian dinosaurs to preserve a well-preserved pelage. This consisted of a mosaic of polygonal, non-overlapping scales, measuring approximately 5mm in diameter, interspersed with rows of stud-like osteoderms embedded in the skin along the neck, back and tail. This suggests that large abelosaurs were predominantly scaly, lacking a feathered coat, although this may have been present in smaller, more basal members of the group. A possible smaller relative of Carnotaurus, the 4 metre Niebler, was described in 2020, with the pectoral girdle of the genus being very similar to that of its larger cousin. In all, abelosaurs were a highly successful lineage of theropods, being one of the major groups of large carnivores across former Gondwana during the Cretaceous. Their unique skull proportions allowed these predators to become specialised titanosaur hunters, utilising sturdy jaws and powerful neck musculature to rip chunks of flesh from their prey. Occupying a massive temporal and geographic range, 
Abelisaurs were among the last non-avian dinosaurs, with the genera Chananisaurus and Majungasaurus being alive to witness the Chicxulub impact that would put a stop to their reign of terror. Without this extinction event, it is likely that Abelisaurs would still be around on the southern continents today. Thanks for watching everyone. The next video will focus on the red panda and its fossil relatives. See you again soon. Cheerio.